Pokemon Emerald with one Wobbuffet and no items was both the hardest Pokemon challenge I've ever done and yet the most rewarding one with how much you guys loved it. That one had very little strategy, so let's do one that requires a bit more creativity. Today's the day we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Platinum with only a single Pikachu? Stats wise, Pikachu is really weak. Low everything but speed, with especially low health and defense, with nearly balanced attack and special attack. By level up he can learn some strong electric type moves and double team, but nothing too special. He really has a lack of type coverage. With TMs that opens up a bit with a couple of decent fighting moves, but it's still mostly just electrical and normal. Dig is probably going to be a must-have TM. Just like last time, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if you think I can win or not. I'm pretty sure that I can do it. I'm interested to see how the ground trainer in the Elite Four goes, though. Let me explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Pikachu, of course. I'll need other Pokémon for HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of them in battle. No glitches, no exploits, no items in battle, only held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, no Light Ball. It's a held item that doubles Pikachu's attack and special attack. I can't use that. It would just be way too easy. Let's do this. I start by editing the game with Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Piplup with Pikachu so that my rival has a Turtwig, as grass resists electricity. Hilariously enough, it still shows a picture of Piplup when I first picked it up. I name my Pikachu My Pride, a reference to my old Let's Play of Pokemon Platinum, and started on the journey. The first thing I do isn't just to level up, unlike my last few runs. A lot of helpful commenters have convinced me to finally learn how effort values work, since it'd be a really good idea to use them to push my stats in the direction that I need them. Pretty much, I want to fight as little as I can until I get to Route 204 where I can grind on Badoo as it gives Special Attack, the stat that I'm going to need most of. Basically, each Pokémon gives an invisible stat bonus on different stats when you beat them, and it helps push your stat growth on level ups in that direction. So if you beat Magikarps mostly for a long time, you're going to get more speed than normal. Well, Abra and Badoo are the early game Pokémon that give special attack, so that's what I want. It's pretty brutal since Badoo resists my attacks and heals itself, while Abra just runs away, but hey, you've got to do what you've got to Badoo. I mean, until half an hour later when I realized that 10 steps to the north is a cave with water-type Psyducks that also give special attack effort values. Whoops. I grind up to level 12 and fight our rival. Starly was a total pushover, as you'd imagine, but Turtwig resists us since we only still have electric-type moves. I paralyze him and growl early to try and stay safe. It's a long fight, but in the end I win with plenty of health to spare. The battle went well, but you know the next one won't. Gym Leader Rorik is the first serious obstacle due to being the Rock-type Gym Leader. With level 12 and 14 Pokémon, I don't stand a chance yet. Let's take a look at our TM moves. Unfortunately, although quite a few moves here are good against Rock, the only one that we can learn right now is Rock Smash. That's both an HM, so I shouldn't put it on Pikachu, and also total crap. I decided that the power leveling on Psyducks for special attack is a better route to go. I'll learn Return as a powerful physical move and keep raising my special attack to prepare me for the rest of the game. I took out 200 Psyducks. Again, I don't understand the effort value system perfectly, but by my understanding, this will either get me to max effort values on special attack or get me very close to it because of the battles that I've already done. It took a long time, but I think it paid off. Check out our stats. Our attack was originally higher than our special attack, but it's really pulled ahead now. Thanks to everybody who commented telling me to research effort values. It was... worth the effort. This grind landed us at level 23, but even with that in return, I only get about halfway through Rourke's battle. I went off to fight a few trainers and got to level 24 when I had the greatest idea in Pokemon history. I'll just use Double Team to not get hit. I totally forgot that I learned this while grinding on Psyducks. With Double Team, the battle goes pretty smoothly. It takes forever due to Rourke using potions, but it's not that hard. Next is Commander Mars at the Windworks, who almost beats us with a lucky crit, but overall it wasn't too bad with learning Thunderbolt on my way over. A while later and I'm at Eterna City's Grass Chin. It's worth pointing out that I've been fighting every trainer that I run into. Pikachu is pretty weak, so I need all the experience that I can get. I want to avoid having to grind again. The less grinding I do, the sooner I can make this video for all of you guys. Gardenia herself was a pain. 
Grass types resist electricity, so once again I had to rely on return to attack. Turtwig crits me early with Razor Leaf, taking me below half health, so I paralyzed it and used six double teams to up my dodge chance. Eventually I took down Turtwig, but Cherum? Cherium? Uh, their Magic Leaf took me to seven health. I was able to finish it off, but her Roserade also has Magic Leaf and finishes me off. Magic Leaf is a move that is always 100% accurate, no matter what, so double team isn't going to help me win this fight. I could get very lucky with Paralysis, but that would require a few hours of attempts to make sure that I never get hit by Magic Leaf twice. I decide that grinding out a few more levels and trying again later is probably the best course of action. A while later and I'm at level 33, and I'm feeling pretty good about my stats. I wish I could take advantage of that high special attack with Thunderbolt, but you know, Grass Gym. Return is gonna have to do for now. I take another shot but get crit by Razor Leaf. It's a high crit chance move, and chances are, if I get crit once, this gym leader battle is a no-go. A couple tries later and my friendship level with my pride must have gone up a threshold, because Return is hitting for way more damage. I don't get hurt by Turtwig, Cherium misses with Leech Seed, and Roserade and I trade Paralysis moves in the first round. Its Magic Leaf still hits hard, but I hit harder and managed to score myself the second badge. Speaking of Paralysis, that reminds me of an idea I was toying with. Would you guys want a series of Q&A videos where I answer the most asked questions in these Pokemon videos? Like the last video, tons of people were asking if I could get paralyzed intentionally, or use Safeguard to avoid Toxic in the Wobbuffet video. I made quite a few attempts with that battle with full power points, but it just went so horribly that I didn't even bother showing it. If you thought the Wallace beatdown was hard when I used Struggle, you should have seen how one-sided it was with Safeguard. Safeguard only lasts a few turns, so I have to keep reapplying it. And if I get Leech Seeded after, and I do every time, it's game over. That goes for holding a berry to remove poison too. Wobbuffet doesn't stand a chance without leftovers. Naturally, being paralyzed going into the fight doesn't make me immune to Leech Seed as well. That's the kind of thing I'd probably be answering on the Q&A videos. Let me know in the comments if that's the kind of video that you'd be interested in. Anyway, back to the challenge. Commander Jupiter was another pushover. I get the feeling that this early in the game, the only real problem will be the gym leaders, since their Pokémon tend to survive a few hits. Pikachu is a bit of a glass cannon right now. I can one-shot a lot of enemies, but if I don't, I could be in a lot of danger. I am not exactly tanky. On my way to the bike shop, Cynthia stops me to give me an egg! How exciting! I haven't the faintest clue what's inside of this egg, but please, once again, if you have any ideas, everyone, make your guesses in the comments down below as to what you believe this egg will hatch into. I shall be waiting with bated breath. Next is the ghost gym, and this one's personal. This gym kicked my ass when I first played this game. In fact, you can watch that ass kicking if you want to. My first time getting to this gym was in my Let's Play of it that I did, and it took me forever to get strong enough to beat Fantina. It was nearly a one-shot sweep with Pikachu, though. With my buffed up special attack and Thunderbolt being a 95 power move with the same type attack bonus, Fantina didn't stand a chance. Next is our rival, and it starts well, but Grottle ends me with too many Razor Leafs. I was really, really close. Second try, I didn't even get hit thanks to a mostly using Withdrawal, and my own double team paying off. I'm surprised that I didn't beat him first try with how easy he was the second try. I started heading east when the egg starts to hatch! Last chance to get your guesses in, what is in this egg? Tokopi. Next up is the fighting gym leader, Maylene. It's another easy battle with Lucario doing some scary damage, but Thunderbolt being just too powerful for her team to handle. On to Pastoria City with our rival again. I'm actually low on Thunderbolts walking into this fight because of the route before it, but thankfully I hit pretty hard. He probably could have taken me out if he actually attacked me with his Grottle, but he just keeps using Withdrawal, so I end up beating him easily. The water gym itself is a major problem. His Gyarados is an easy one-shot but his second is Quagsire, who's water and ground. Since he's immune to electricity and return hardly hurts him, all I can do is double team and try to whittle him down with returns. Unfortunately, he still hits with some mud shots and does insane damage, eventually taking me out. I would use double team against Gyarados instead so that the moment I'm against Quagsire I can start attacking, but Gyarados uses waterfall and that actually does more damage, so I decide I need to level up. 
I also buy some coins and use it to get a silk scarf, a held item that increases normal type moves power by 20% to see if that helps much with return. Hours later and I'm level 60. This time goes much better. Gyarados is still down in one hit and Quagsire was only able to hit me once as return does quite a bit more damage now, leaving Wake with a float soul that can actually outspeed me. It hits hard, but one Thunderbolt takes it down, finally winning me the fifth badge. Cyrus was hardly worth bringing up, an absolute sweep. I was pretty fortunate he uses a lot of flying types and low defense Pokemon in this fight, as I remember him being pretty rough. We've got another rival fight, and good lord, Torterra. Right, so I forgot about this. The final form of Turtwig is a grass and ground type, so my Thunderbolt flat out won't work anymore, and I can't use Thunder Wave on him to paralyze him. The only way that I could paralyze him would be by getting hit and static doing it to him, but he hits like a freight train and takes me out like I'm nothing. Pikachu can't learn any flying, bug, fire, or ice moves, so I can't be super effective against him. Return is my best move against him, and Torterra has a ton of defense. Also, Pikachu and Torterra are male, so I can't learn and use Attract. And Godfrey's first Pokemon is a Staraptor with Intimidate, so my attack is lowered, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. This is gonna suck. Or so you thought! Six double teams against Staraptor and a Starterra never got me, Floatzel goes down in one Thunderbolt. Second try, baby! MDB the VIP MVP! Anyway, on to Byron Saxton, the Smackdown commentator. Sorry, terrible throwback joke. Byron the Steel Gym Leader. This guy is awful. He starts with a Magneton with a scary moveset that I had to just sit there and hope I survive while building up double teams. Why? Because his second Pokemon is a Steelix with Earthquake who one-shots me. I have to use six double teams, finish off Magneton, then land exactly 11 returns to actually make Steelix faint. What you're seeing right now is a time lapse of attempts. This is brutal. Later I even went and did Iron Island, but I only leveled up once so it's still brutal. After a few dozen attempts, I finally luck my way through and beat Steelix just to get instantly killed by Bastodon. God damn it. Eventually I got so fed up I replaced Thunder Wave with Dig. It's still not nearly strong enough, but at least it's super effective. Unfortunately, I still need to use a ton of double teams because Earthquake can hit you while you're underground. Still though, if about two digs can beat Steelix, then I only need to dodge four Earthquakes, so it's not as horrible. You know, a lot of people have said that I have inhuman patience in the Magikarp and Wobbuffet videos and have asked how I do it. I think I'm just optimistic. I look at it as a numbers game. With the strategy that I've created, I can win if the numbers work out. If they choose the right moves and miss enough, I'll eventually win. I might not be able to come up with the best or most creative strategy in the world due to my gaps in knowledge about the games, but if I can come up with a good enough strategy that the numbers line up, say, 1 in 300 times, well, I know I can sit here and do 300 attempts and win, so it's only a matter of time. The difference between most people and me is that most people aren't willing to do 300 attempts and would rather spend that time figuring out something else to do. Well, I'm not most people. I'll sit here and do 300 attempts because I know at the end of it all, you guys will get a fun video to watch, and you'll all tell me how much you appreciate how I go through this stuff for your entertainment. In a nutshell, it doesn't matter if the odds aren't in my favor, time is on my side. I wonder when people are going to realize that everything I say in these videos are just obscure pro wrestling references. Anyway, an upsetting amount of time later and I finally take out Steelix with Dig as he sends out Bastodon. I take the thing out in one dig and put the game down to make nachos because I need comfort food. Commander Saturn gets absolutely pummeled as I one-shot his whole team. Team Galactic really needs to step up. Commander Mars was a complete pushover as well, so it's on to Snowpoint City, and it's a rough battle again. Candace's second Pokémon is a Pillow Swine with Earthquake. God, a lot of Pokémon in this game have Earthquake. I also can't just do my double team trick this time because our first Pokémon is Sneasel who has Faint Attack, a move that bypasses accuracy checks. If I Thunderbolt Sneasel and return Pillow Swine twice, I'll live with red health, but third out is Abomasnow, think I'm saying that right, whose ability causes an instant hailstorm that will always take me out. I thought I was gonna have to grind when For The Journey on Twitter gave me a really good suggestion. I should use Iron Tail with an iron plate for added power and sweep them, then just use the move relearner to get my Thunderbolt back. Now, I hate Iron Tail as a move with a passion, 
It misses constantly. It's a 70 accuracy 100 power move that feels like it's got an accuracy of 2. First attempt and I miss Sneasel three times in a row, and then later I miss on Snowbama is what I wrote! Oh my god, that is not his name. <laughs> oh, that wasn't intentional. I genuinely forgot the name of the Pokemon. And I die. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. A few tries later, though, and the strategy works. Misses aside, it's a complete sweep. See why I tell you to follow me on Twitter? It just sped up the uploading of this video by days because I was just planning on grinding otherwise. Everyone go give Follow the Journey a follow on Twitter, by the way, while I go get rid of this goddamn Iron Tail. Next up is Cyrus, and once again, total pushover. I swept the guy with Thunderbolt. Again, I really remembered this guy being way harder, but I guess I just didn't have any Electric-type Pokémon the last time I played Platinum. Saturn was easy too, I'm just gonna stop bringing up Galactic Commanders unless they put up a real fight at this point. We're nearing the final battle with Cyrus, but first we have to go through the Distortion World. Man, I hate this place. It takes forever, it runs like crap, there's nothing to do, and if you black out on Cyrus, it genuinely takes 20 minutes to get back here, and that's if you remember the way. This is why you need to make safety saves often. The actual final Cyrus battle is yet another complete one-shot sweep. This guy took me ages during the Let's Play when I had a full team, and here I am completely destroying him with Thunderbolt. I guess I just never put it together that he can't handle electric moves. Last for the gym leaders is electric trainer Volkner, and I thought he'd be a lot tougher. Dig took out his Jolteon and Raichu easily, then using Return then Dig so that his health was never low enough for a full restore, easily took out Electrovire, I think that's how you say that, and Luxray, netting me the final badge. Last big battle before the Elite Four, and we've got the rival. This one is an absolute brick wall of a fight. Star Raptor is out first with Intimidate, so I lose some attack, and he often U-turns to Torterra, who can one-shot me with Earthquake. My best move for him is an already weakened return that hardly hurts him, so this battle is a no-go right now. I'm gonna need to grind out more levels while I form a strategy. Considering there's a ground trainer in the Elite Four, and the Pokemon Champion herself has a Garchomp with Earthquake, I think it's best that I take the opportunity to get to level 100. Do you like what I've been writing on the touchscreen's notepad, by the way? I swear, with all the people who have told me that they've made Twitter accounts just to follow me, someone needs to find a way to get me verified on Twitter. Doesn't Twitter randomly verify people who write articles for news sites all the time, despite them having, like, no followers or engagement score? I gotta write some articles or something. I mean, most of them are glorified bloggers anyway, I'm sure I'm qualified. Even after getting to level 100, this is a rough one. The longer that Star Raptor decides to not use U-Turn, the better. Because not only does his Torterra have Earthquake, but so does his Snorlax. I need good evasion to be able to survive this fight. So a big part of this battle is just grinding out attempts until I get to one with my evasion high enough. A few attempts in, and I have an amazing run. I get hit by close combat a couple times, but I manage to get my six double teams in and take out Star Raptor with a Thunderbolt. Onto the first serious threat with Torterra, and I chip away with Return. It misses a Leaf Storm and an Earthquake, giving me a knockout on my third return. Next is his other heavy hitter, Snorlax, who takes massive damage from a Thunderbolt. He misses with Earthquake, and I finish it with Return. Hair crosses out, and much to my surprise, one Thunderbolt was enough to knock it out. Floatzel obviously gets one shot with a Thunderbolt, and last out is Rapidash, who can't handle it either. It's a scary first half of the fight, but his last three Pokémon just don't stand a chance. Now it's on to the real challenge, the Elite Four. I won't lie, I'm nervous about getting into this one, but I think I have a reasonable chance at this. Let me know if you think that I can pull off this challenge. First is Bug Trainer Aaron, and to my surprise, Thunderbolt completely sweeps his entire team. I was pretty surprised, I thought Scizor and Drapion would hang in there and get some hits, but it went as smoothly as it could've. Second for the Elite Four is Ground Trainer Bertha, and this is what I've been dreading the whole game. Thankfully, I have a plan. I replace Dig with Grass Knot and use Double Team at the start, then start sweeping. It's basically a Grass Low Kick, so it does damage based on weight. Ground Pokémon tend to be really heavy, so this bulldozes through them. Gliscor is too light to die on one Grass Knot, but Double Team let me dodge his Earthquake and pull out a victory. He would've one-shot me otherwise. Flint the Fire Trainer was a total pushover. I equipped Choice Specs so that I can only choose one attack, but get a 50% buff to my special attack, and then sweep his entire team with Thunderbolt. 
I was originally going to use Dig, but I got a great idea from Whatageek, who's pretty much my go-to guy whenever I'm stuck on a Pokemon thing. And he told me to go get the choice specs. Link to his channel in the description. We did a randomizer playthrough of Soul Silver and Heart Gold over on his channel. It just finished up. The whole thing is uploaded if you want to watch it. To my surprise, Psychic Trainer Lucian was also a sweep with Thunderbolt. I know I did EV training for special attack and I have choice specs on, but I'm really surprised that Pikachu was able to take out things like Alakazam in one Thunderbolt. It's on to the final battle with Pokemon Champion Cynthia. No choice specs this time, I need more than one move. I know Garchomp is out second with Earthquake, so I have to keep attempting six double teams on Spiritomb until I'm able to survive and pull it off. Many attempts in and I finally get all six double teams without being hit. I get unlucky and crit Garchomp, causing him to end up with low enough health on the second attack after his berry to get full restored. Thankfully, he still kept missing and I was able to take him out. That would have been better if I didn't crit him, because then I would never activate the berry and I'd be able to take him out without him getting as many attacks in. Lucario goes down in one thunderbolt, much to my surprise. I thought that thing was gonna ruin me if it hit. Togekiss goes down in one shot, much more predictably, what with it being part flying type. Melodic also goes down in one Thunderbolt, and there's only one Pokemon left, Roserade. I remember how strong this thing is, I used one in my Pokemon Platinum Let's Play. I go for a Thunderbolt on the off chance that I paralyze it, because I know that it would survive either that or return anyway. I don't paralyze it though, so it goes for extra sensory after it survives, but it misses. That would have ended me for sure. A second Thunderbolt, and it's all over. I've beaten the challenge. The Elite Four went so much smoother than I was expecting, and I'm thankful for that. It was nice having a quick and easy challenge after the Magikarp and Wobbuffet ones. Overall, I think I only spent about four days on this challenge, so that already makes it two weeks faster than the other two. I'm actually gonna have a little bit of time to edit this video. Maybe I won't make obvious mistakes in the first 10 seconds this time. Normally this is where I'd get you all pumped for the next challenge by telling you what it is, but I can't spoil it. It's too special. Trust me. The next challenge video is going to be so amazing that I can't even hint as to what it might be. Subscribe, hit the bell, stay tuned. If you want to see me do more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should do next. I'm sure you can tell that I had a lot of fun making this. Also, check out the playlist in the description if you want to see all of the other Pokemon challenges that I already have uploaded, because there's a bunch now. If you guys want to see more Pokemon stuff from me, I Let's Played all of Pokemon Platinum years ago, and my friend Whatageek and I did a Soul Silver and Heart Gold randomizer playthrough over on his channel. We're also going to do a randomizer playthrough of Black and White at some point soon, so, you know, get pumped for that. Subscribe to him. Also, come to my Twitch streams and tell me that the video sent you. A bunch of you have been showing up when I've been playing Pokemon Sun over on my streams, and it's been a lot of fun. So, thanks for that. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.